Welcome to Live in the Messiah's Love. I'm Kimmy Chalusier, Senior Pastor of A Day of Prayer, and my beloved husband is here with me again as we're talking about um, prophetic intercession and praying for your children before trouble arises. Today we're going to focus on preparation for effective prayers. This is important because we have to break up any hard ground that may be in our heart, any misconceptions, and prepare for the word of God and the will of God to come through our prayers effectively and go beyond that hit or miss strategy that oftentimes uh, we pray with, especially when we don't know where we're coming from with our prayers. And it's important to the Lord and to our lives and our well-being that we are able to confidently release our faith time after time after time. And especially when it comes to the family and your household and praying for your children, you need to be confident and effective in your prayers so that you're able to release your faith and your trust is able to be placed in Christ and you're able to move on and tend to the other things God has for you to focus on and to work on with your family. So we have a saying in our our ministry and our family. Honey, will you share that with us? We do. It's um, dealing with faith. It is here. And when you hear differently, you know or understand differently. And when you know or understand differently, you think differently. And then when you think differently, you believe differently. And when you believe differently, you will speak differently. And when you speak differently, you will live or do differently. But it also brings you right back to hearing differently, which is how faith comes and arises. Amen to that. And who we believe the most is ourself. Um, Hearing our own words in alignment with what God says is how we build faith. One of the ways that we build faith. And I can tell you all day long, but if you don't take it into yourself and if you don't make it a part of your language, it'll be harder for you to stand when you need to. Absolutely. And, And that... Our, I'll say, family declaration there is comes from Romans 10, right? In mm-hmm. verse 11, it says, whoever believes in him will not be disappointed. In verse 13, it says, whoever calls on him uh, on the name of the Lord will be saved. Yeah. But then verses 14 through 17 say this, how will they call on him in whom they have not believed? How will they believe in him with whom they have not heard? And how will they hear without a preacher? How will they preach unless they are sent? Just as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news of good things. However, they did not all heed the good news. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We have to hear it. Amen. And it doesn't always have to come from a preacher. Amen. We can preach to ourselves in the in the form of when we read the word. I, I encourage you to just read it out loud, Amen. because that is planting those seeds. It's watering others within you mm-hmm. to encourage you to build up your most holy, most precious faith, so you can then, I'll say, it, the word gets on the inside of you and it, it wells up within you, so then you will live, live, do, you will conduct and carry yourself becoming more conformed to the image of Christ. Amen. Amen. So let's, let's review our scripture that we were looking at um, when we started this series. And it's Proverbs 22, 3. Uh, this is the Passion Translation. It says, A prudent person with insight foresees danger coming and prepares himself for it, but the senseless rush blindly forward and suffer the consequences. And Proverbs 27, 12, um, also the Passion Translation says, a wise, shrewd person discerns the danger ahead and prepares himself, but the naive simpleton never looks ahead and suffers the consequences. We are in a, a particularly special time in in the seasons that God is, you know, taking us through on our journey back to eternity with him and the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the second coming. And in this season, every as I've observed just the people of God um, as they're functioning in the earth and the Holy Spirit's moving with them, each of us has a a unique task. Each of us has a a different task that God wants us to work on, but each of those tasks is important. And in this season right now, you know, something that the Lord has laid on my heart is that he wants to restore the family because he's bringing and fulfilling his promises 
through the family, through the the promises he's made to generations before us. And it concerns uh, what happens in our household. You know, we we look at um, political things and or um, financial things. But if your family's not right, how long do those other structures stand and last? Or how well are you able to advance in that arena when you're distracted or if you're, you know, your family's not going the way it's supposed to or that they're being taken captive by the adversary to do, you know, ungodly and wicked things. And those things. structures are, are everything. It's in government. It's in education. It's in business. It's, they, they can be great things when they're all brought into subjection and submission to the Lord. Amen. Well, that, that begins with us. Amen. And, and raising and teaching our children how to do that and how to stand in their faith. Amen. I can't stand for them, but I can teach them how. Absolutely. And, and then how to bring those different areas into subjection so that others can now, I'll say, learn and grow properly, not be distracted and not giving the enemy a foothold and a place Amen. for for those things, whether it's business, government, politics, whatever, education. Ministry. Right, um, all those things to then be a potential distraction. Mm -hmm. we're, we're raising up the next generation and Amen. they have to be equipped and prepared. And one of the ways that we do that is not only demonstrating to them godly lifestyles and, and impute or pouring that into them, what to do, how to carry themselves, but also surrounding them with prayer. Because oftentimes battles and what are won and battles for our children are won and lost from our prayer closet. Amen. So let's get into this, um, making sure that we don't have any hard ground in our heart towards God when we, when we pray and when we're considering, um, you know, cooperating with him. So the first point is the Holy Spirit reveals things to come. Um, John 16 verses 13 through 15 and John 10, 10 um, tell us that the Holy Spirit's job in the earth is to guide us into all truth. So that means number one, he's always going to speak the truth to us. He never is going to, he's never going to lie or deceive. And not, and not only that, but he's not speaking on his own authority. Even though he is God, he is fully submitted to the divine order of the Godhead. Mm -hmm. And he conveys to us exactly what the Father wills as it comes through Jesus Christ to his body, the church. And your children are a part of the body of Christ. So God is also conveying those things through the Holy Spirit, his will concerning them. Um, and then whatever he speaks, that's what we know is surely going to come to pass. And we can trust and rely on him. He will glorify Jesus at all times. And he declares to us what is important or what's on the, the Lord and Savior's heart. Um, John 10, 10 about him. And this is the second part of that verse. This is the truth about the Lord is that he came that we would have life and that we may have it more abundantly. So let me read John 16 to you again, because I kind of paraphrased it. It says, however, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the father has are mine. Therefore, I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. Amen. Amen. But, but in there is also the answer, mm -hmm. right? It is, well, first and foremost, w why we must, I'll say, develop the willingness mm -hmm. to hear what the Holy Spirit has to say. And, and in that willingness, it is to run everything by him. He is the spirit of truth. Mm -hmm. So no matter what we hear, even if it sounds good, if it, quote unquote, tickles our ears, mm -hmm. right? we should still run it by the Lord Amen. and hear what the Lord has to say about it, which he's going to reveal through his Holy Spirit. Amen. And then it also, like I said, gives the answer on how we should pray, because this is exactly how the Holy Spirit operates. He hears from the Lord, and then he speaks it, right? He will not speak of his own initiative, mm -hmm. but only as he hears, he will speak. Amen. So then we, as we conduct our lives, should be listening to the Lord, and whatever he says, that's what we should be saying. Amen. And, and praying, and, and all those things, because that's the truth, and that's the only thing that will produce good fruit. Amen. And when it's time to stand, we know that Jesus is the rock. Amen. And it, only on his word are we able to stand. If we're standing on Mama said, or we're standing on I think, or we're standing on I want, I hope, we have to stand on the word. And you can stand on mama said when mama said what the Lord said. 
Amen. Amen. But of its own, it has, you know, if it's not what God said, right? Amen. It just, just not going to remain. And that, that's no discredit to mama and them, but it just puts us right back on where we need to be. We have to stand on the word of God. Amen. We have to stand on the name of Jesus Christ and what he wants. So the second point, um, actually, you said something, sweetheart, that that was was interest. You said, run it by the Lord. Absolutely. And you don't mean run it by like, all right, here, Lord, bless us. I want to go. Okay, we'll I no, 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 <laughs> <laughs> no. I, I mean, let it pass by before him. Right. Lord, I heard what was said. And this is what was said. What are, right? David said, I want to know your ways and your thoughts. Amen. Right. So, Lord, I heard this. But what are. What do you have to say about it? What is your way concerning this? What are your thoughts concerning what was said? Is Amen. this truth or is it a lie? And I don't care if it's uh, a fraction of a percent that's that's not truth. Then that makes it a lie. Amen. And the, I think First John tells us to test all spirits. Don't believe Amen. all spirits, but test them. See if they're of God or not. That means hold them up to the Holy Spirit and the Word of God and see how they fare. You know, that's advice. That's all things that especially pertain to how we govern our family and our children. Amen. Amen. Second point. Now I'm, I'm ready for that now. Um, it says it, it's important for us to know that the thief, that would be Satan, devils and demons come for one purpose. And that is to steal, kill and destroy. Mm -hmm. There's nothing in between. Um, there's nothing good about the adversary. He's not suddenly going to tell the truth. He's got a, a streak of truth. no, He's a liar, and he's always been a liar. Uh, let's look at John, the first part of John 10, 10, and then we'll also look at John eight forty four. So John 10, 10 says this, The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Mm -hmm. And then John eight forty four says, You are of your father, the devil. This is the Lord... Uh, Jesus in his earthly ministry talking to the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources for he is a liar and the father of it. So sometimes when the adversary comes to approach us, he comes with um, it's almost like a tone of I'm just trying to help you out. I'm just trying to save you so you don't embarrass yourself. I'm just trying to tell you so you don't fall into trouble, you know, and it brings a sense of fear with it and terror. And this is not to be confused with the reverence for God, but it's a, it's something that causes you to try to rush and make decisions. It brings fear to the situation. And often the, the main point of it is to draw you away from believing and trusting in God. Steal and killing and destroying. Amen. But then it also says this, and depending on the translation, right? Uh, this, what you just read says he speaks from his own resources. Mm -hmm. Other versions say he speaks from his native tongue. Ooh. So what comes from within? What is at the core or the heart of, well, Satan, the mm -hmm. adversary, mm -hmm. the devil? He's speaking from what's at the core of him. Amen. Which so, is nothing good. And there's nothing good. Amen. So I think we as as believers and, and those learning and coming into... Mm -hmm. um, I'll say knowledge, new knowledge and understanding of the prophetic and prophetic intercession and how to carry and conduct ourselves and our lives and our Christian walk we need to understand this. So we're not led astray, not even a little bit. Amen. Amen. Um, one, one day the Lord spoke to me and he said, um, Kamisha, as believers, you should never look at anything that the adversary says and think, Oh, he's telling me the truth over God. And somehow after centuries of trying to destroy humanity, suddenly now he's changed his heart and his mind. And now he has your best interest at hand. And he's suddenly going to offer good counsel. You think about how he came to woman in the garden. Was he really trying to help her be more wise? Or was he trying to steal the authority that belonged to mm. um, Adam and mankind through the mantle that Jesus put on him, that the, the authority that God gave him? Well, now we know, you know, thousands of years later, it was there. He was there to steal the authority and to destroy the, try to destroy the work of the father. And who did he try to steal it for? Well, his own self gain mm -hmm. to, to take over dominion over the earth. Amen. 
what he had already lost. He was trying to scrap and scrape and get something for himself again. But um, we already know that he's a defeated foe. So changing our mindset on that, like establishing those two clear points, God is for us and Satan is against us. There's no crossover. God is not against us and Mm. Satan is not for us. Keeping those straight in our mind, God is on your side and he is a good God. And the adversary is just that your adversary and he is only bad and only does bad things. Mm -hmm. Well, all right. We're out of time for today. Um, I hope you were blessed by that. If you have a moment, please uh, take the opportunity to like this episode, subscribe to this channel and share this with your um, your loved ones on social media, people that you believe would be blessed by it as well. We thank you and we're praying for you. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.